do 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 Twitter. The tweeter. The tweet. The tweetsers. Hello, Streamland. The autumn VRD. Breakdown. What's our URL? Twitch.tv slash STLVRD. We really need a better name than the macronym that we currently have. <laughs> All right. Tweet it. Cool. I just got like two tweets that are just like, hey, keep doing a great job. That's really cool. That feels nice. Okay. Um, beverages. Hey, we have uh, double fried and hyphenated already in the chat. How y'all doing? Oh, I should I put a name here. Sorry, y'all. I just got a new computer, so this is running a real, real rough. Not the professionalism I know you're ready used to. In the uh, Mark's job switch back to his previous job, he uh, lost his computer that everything was running on, so we've <laughs> been frantically trying to get things reset. We kind of forgot about that. This is kind or, of the joy. He's been frantically trying to reset. I've been commentating his commentation. Yeah. Uh, so, why don't you start breaking down what we're going to talk about while I get this set up. Alright, so we just have not had a chance to do the kind of recap show for the Autumn VRD, which was at the end here of the month, uh, at August. And so we wanted to do kind of a breakdown, talk about, I was, I'll, you know, as a participant, I'll talk about what I did, what, what went wrong with me, uh, but also talk about uh, what went right with a lot of other people and what strategies popped up, things like that, uh, what worked, what didn't work. Uh, from my talking with people and just that general uh, talking about this for amazing format and what works and what doesn't and why it's awesome and kind of break down from there. And this time I actually drafted it as well. Uh, I didn't plan on it, but at 1 a.m. in the morning we had uh, two of our backups not end up working out and uh, then our back yeah, so two backups and two people bailed. Right. So, I ended up having to fill in, which was a little interesting. Uh, I was not prepared in any way. And you were exhausted, sick, True. and tired. <laughs> it, it wasn't great. Um, so that that explains the the burning question, which is why Time Vault didn't go in this third seed like we're used to it going. I, uh, I which still is, don't know. Yeah, yeah I, I, I just wasn't feeling up to trying to fight and build something that I had no idea how to play. Like, I, hadn't, I didn't have anything spreadsheets ready for it. I wasn't, I didn't want to break into Time Vault when I was honestly like couldn't remember to draft remand so trying to figure out what the right pick or tard hey yeah oh hey how you doing Elaine so yeah so we we had not only was Mark in the last minute we had another last minute sub Cody Owen uh he had been on our like future list mm -hmm. uh he wanted to do it and he'd been on our future list and then uh one of our cancelizations and then our one of our cancellations so Cody got wrangled in at like 10 30 the night before and he said he was up till about two, th laying in bed to about two thirty or three thirty, running through deck lists in his head, and wow. trying to watch the previous draft and get a feel for it, and uh, you know, get. Uh... <laughs> and let's talk about how Elaine did well, other than being amazing. Exactly. Yeah, Elaine. Elaine not only killed it on camera, uh, but also ended up killing it in the booth, in yeah. the actual play area. And I honestly, uh, Elaine's deck was better than her record. That that I don't know what happened in those last couple games, but that, mm. I think that deck was better than that record. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I think that a 5-2 is about right for it. Like, this format is super, right. um, first of all, it's really fragile in that you're playing one match, and that one match can just get wrecked. You're not, yep. like, playing against any bad decks. There are very few matchups that are predetermined. Like, you're probably, at best, 70% against any matchup, so the idea that any deck could run the table is pretty right. tough anyway. So well, let's start with this time. So your time ball quest, comment, right? Yeah. So this was obviously a funny point of contention. Uh, Blyden th was thinking he was mind gaming people. <laughs> like he, he claims he's some mind game guru. He comes in, he's talking shit about time vault. He may have mind gamed Joe Wisdom. He may have mind gamed Joe Wisdom. That's yeah. very possible. Joe is brand new as well, first time. Um, so, but he's talking shit about time vault and then jumped on it. And of course, we've talked about time vault quite a bit in the past. Yep. Uh, you know, where does it need to fall? So the one thing interesting enough, so my deck was three and four. Uh, the two decks that I absolutely destroyed were Jeff's Time Vault deck and <laughs> uh, Alex Artifact deck, right? Yeah. So I mean, I, the thing with Time Vault and the Artifact decks in general is they are amazingly potent. Jeff's deck, when it did its thing, was amazingly potent. And obviously, he had a solid four and three, um, better than mine overall. Yep. But I do think after you know watching when they are still like the easiest to hate out decks. 
right? Like in each of those matchups, I dropped a collector oof, or I dropped a stony silence, or both. There's a reason I took Null Rod's seventh pick. Like, yeah, that got a lot of hate from both the booth, but also people out there. But that straight up won me the game in two out of two of the three against Blyden, and it also won me one of the matches against uh, one of the games against uh, Alex. Yeah, because I just drop I drop a Null Rod and the game just ends. So, so I, I do think that those decks are, you know, I, and obviously I think Jess was better than Alex, and the record supports that, right? Yeah. Alex was doing a lot of different things. Alex and... ended up going for a low-powered modern deck in this format, which is, like, granted, he, probably the deck he knew and he was comfortable walking in with, but there were just, like, a lot of cards that weren't super useful yeah, for I, him. I tried the same thing, and obviously it didn't work out either, so... Oh, Double Fried, uh, <laughs> double fried gifted a sub for Autumns? Well done. That's very nice. So yeah, I mean the Volt pick is is interesting. I mean it can just flat out win games, yes. and it's so strong. But you know, is it better than you know? Was it is it better than than the other high end options? It should always be in the first four four. So probably five is low. Um, I don't know. I mean, I mean honestly, like once you're at this level, the, the difference between Mox Sapphire and Mox Ruby is minimal. The difference between Mox Sapphire and Mox Jet is minimal. Right. Like, people love to kind of talk about, like, oh, Sapphire has to go before Emerald. But if you're locked into a green deck and you want to signal that, I right. think the signal it's completely justifiable. Yeah. It's not like the order of the Moxin is super important. I also think that as long as Time Vault isn't going, like, third round or, like, I don't know, some of the uh, Planeswalkers getting picked before it, like, I think that would be strange. Right. But pick, if you want to be in a Mox deck doing that seems reasonable if you don't want to do a time vault um it's also just like if you're in time vault you're going to be fighting blue players and you're going to be fighting artifact players right, right. which is fine but you got to be willing to have that fight and not everybody is yeah, right it's, it's definitely contentious you know you're going to be in those battles as we can see i mean that was a four person fight for exactly. some of that stuff yeah the the interesting pick i think was uh brandon taking fast bond first round that felt odd to me. It did, and it, it threw some things off. It made some things go later. Um, Actually, let's check. When does Fast Bond usually get picked? Because I, I remember that card just not getting picked some drafts. Oh, it didn't at all. Uh, the first or second VRD. So yeah, it's only VRD. eight out of fourteen drafts total, and generally round nine. Right. When it does get picked. He was making a statement, and I don't know. I, I mean, when he fast bond, com fast bond comboed off on me, I about cried. It, I had not even occurred to me what he was doing. Yeah. Until, so what he did to me on on stream was he had fast bond, Zurin orb, and Crucible. Yeah. So, but no, to make matters worse, Blyden had told him to take the 45th pick tireless tracker. He wasn't even they hadn't even thought about it. He had That's tracker so out to draw his whole deck, and I'm like, so he's like, I draw my whole deck. I'm like, okay. And he's like, I have an infant man. I'm like, okay. I'm like, still waiting. And he goes, I cast Emrakul. I'm like, okay. And he goes, well, that gives an extra turn. I go, oh yeah, I forgot about that part. Okay, scoop. Right. <laughs> you know? Exactly. I was like, okay, okay. I still might win. I still, nope, no, okay, now. And that deck, that deck actually, uh, Bob Maher played that deck in the Vintage Super League a couple of seasons ago. Yeah. And that was like, I mean, it ended up being pretty underpowered because three card combos are worse than two card combos. And now Fast Bond's un, uh, yeah. unrestricted. <laughs> there was a LSV just to the deck with three Fast Bonds in it that was sweet. Yeah. It was just a green something in his deck, but it was great. Oh yeah, Elaine's complicate. Okay, so that one I know people in the booth weren't super um, weren't super set on this card, but complicate is actually ended up. I don't know how well it worked out for her, but I think this is a great pickup. A three mana uncounterable four spike that draws you a card. Yeah, no, that card. And, and then like sometimes it's a mana leak that's but bad. Game one against me, Elaine. I should know it was you. It was it was you who just blew me out with. Spell Pierce, and you had four, yes. and four Spike. Yes. Like, you had both, and, and uh, Days too. Like, you just had yep. to back to back to back. I went, yeah, One yeah. mana or zero mana counter spells. It was uh, great, because turn one, uh, I played a land. Turn two, then I passed. Turn two, you played your one drop, or your turn one, you played your right. one drop, I four spiked it. Yeah. Then turn two, you played a one drop, I spell pierced it. And then turn three, you played a three drop, and, you dazed and I it. dazed it. Yeah, it was just, felt the best. I, I mean, those cards are so good in this format, I think. Yes. I mean, because you were, were, everyone's playing so tight, everyone's playing tight on mana. Correct. I was running 13 in my deck, because I had double enrolled, and, or a double mox, and so many, um... Uh, you know, mana dorks. Yeah. That I was running like 13. I know Cody was running like 13 or 14. Like, people are playing tight mana because you can. And, you know, the, so the curve is pretty strong. And, like, those spells just... Even, I think, even later game, they're still better because you're often 
tapping out for for stuff, right? It, especially against the counter spell decks where you're trying to Definitely. bait things. And you know, I had several games against you where I was like playing three spells to get through two counters to stick the third one, right. and if you had one more island, to, you know. So, so yeah, Elaine wants to talk about Dovin, but before we get there, let's kind of talk about high level who is fighting whom. Because it was pretty clear that Elaine and I were just straight up in the same lanes. Right. We, and right next to each other. It exactly. was hilarious. And, and, and like that's just because I had slept four hours. I didn't plan on yeah. drafting. And I'm just like, I'm just going to draft every counter spell. And I guess I'll draft a Delver if I need right. to have a mission. You do what you need. To, you need, did what you knew. Yeah, exactly. Right, on your on your situation. Elaine ended up with a much better deck than mine. She took all the Planeswalkers about two rounds before I was going to take them, which meant that I had a time walk that basically was an explorer. It got right. very little value. Um, and my win condition was literally cunning wishing yeah. for Blue Sun Zenith and drawing my deck and then eventually making them draw their deck. Elaine just also had really good interaction beyond the counter spells. True. Like, and that was when, when uh, she destroyed me. Like, everything I cast, she had something for, right? It was like, okay, you do this. And then it was like, all right, well, here is a... Um, the white uh, vote one or whatever, a council's judgment. Yes. And it was just like this, this constant... Just destroying my face. It was just it, the best interaction, right? Out of out of the, out of it all. And I had, I don't know. So so then the other um, Dovin hand of control. This card is so good. Yeah, it's fine. It's, no, I told it's uh, Teferi. Elaine, sorry, not Teferi. It's a uh, uh, what's the? It's Thalia. Right. Well, okay. Now this card's better than Thalia in this format. Whoa. Here's why. Really? It's more versatile, right? Elaine drafted this in VRD two, and it was a late draft. And she grabbed it, and I complimented her on it then because the card, the card is just really powerful here, right? So what it does is it does the the Thalia thing right. against very relevant things in this draft, right? It doesn't hit creatures, but it artifacts, enchant, or artifacts, instants, and sorceries. Sure. So no enchantments, but the enchantments are not as relevant. They don't matter. But on top of that, you get to bubble these ma- these big reanimator decks, these over things, right? Sure. So you blight steal. I bubble your blight steal. I'm not scared anymore, right? So it does something that Thalia doesn't do in this format. It's not just a body. It's harder to get rid of than Thalia. And, like... Could, it costs a full extra mana. I mean, I guess it's pitchable to Force of Will. It's pitchable to Force. Uh, she, she had Force of Negation. And, there, and there's so much... But, you know, that full extra mana is not... I don't think it, it hurts it, right? I mean, but, like, against Cody, against Reanimator, against some of these Ooh. other strategies. Apparently it stalled a Merit Lodge for five turns on camera, which is pretty sweet. Yeah. I mean, it's just... Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, know? no, I'll, I'll defer to the people who right. played it. I'm I'm not through watching all the matches yet. I'm still I just finished watching the draft. Um, but that's my next. I'm gonna make sure I get through right. all of it. That's that sounds amazing though. Um, okay, so other people that were competing, obviously, uh, Jeff. Uh, so so the other people, Joe Joe kind of splashed around competing with everybody. So he had right. blue that he just randomly drafted a brainstorm after we all thought he was off blue. Uh, and then he... Joe was started, just figuring out what he was doing. <laughs> yeah, but he's sort of like fighting with the artifact decks a right. little bit too. Um, he, he was definitely experimenting around. Right. He and Brandon definitely got into it though with the crop right. rotation and Wasteland, for instance. Right, and the Crucible. Yes. Um, but yeah, then Blyden and Alec were in hard competition for the right. artifact decks. Cody was completely wide open in his own lane with Reanimator. And I, I think, was too. The only pick that... Yeah. Uh, I lost one pick, and that was um, Walking Ballista to Alec at 13. Okay, sure. Yeah, Walking Ballista, I mean, that would have been nice, but it doesn't... I'll tell you why it didn't matter, and yeah. eventually when we get to my deck, it, it was point. It didn't so, matter. It I was mean, a bad deck. Looking purely from this, if I think Cody had had more familiarity with the format, mm-hmm. I think Cody would have Co- then ended up 6-1. Cody misplayed and blew, blew the game against me. Yeah, and uh, that's just... We're dealing with a whole bunch of new cards, probably not an expert in Legacy and Vintage, which, right. at, no matter how good you are at EDH, no matter how close you think this format is to EDH... Right. This format, when playing it, feels a whole lot more like Legacy. For the actual like drafting and building of decks, I agree it's closer to the EDH. But in the, you can't make the mistakes you make in EDH and get away with them well, in this format. Cody's misplay against me was almost very similar to your almost misplay against me. Yeah. Um, he, in response to um, me getting ready to go off, he killed the Finks, mm-hmm. but it just rebounded in and didn't get any, can't gain a counter because Malera was out. Oh, where your no. almost misplay was you almost let the Finks resolve right. when I had Alter Dementia, and I would go to just milled you out. Correct. Um, so, yeah, no, just, I mean, that's I not even like it. a legacy misplay. That's just a straight misplay. You just killed the wrong thing. <laughs> he just killed the wrong thing. <laughs> if he had played and drafted better, he would have won more matches. Yeah, I agree. I don't think that the drafting is actually... I think his deck was completely fine. Yeah. Right? I, think I mean, I, he had a couple weird picks, like the yeah. Kirik, you know, but... 
But yeah, no, I think that the... the <laughs> that Eric blew Brandon out on camera. It, it seemed like it did well. I don't know. I mean, if you can get it, if you can cast it turn two or three in this format pretty easy. And uh, yeah. like, especially with Soul Ring, he can cast it uh, turn two nearly every time. And then cast a bunch of other stuff. For, actually, he had Simon Spirit Guy. He could cast it turn one. And then cast another <laughs> bunch of other stuff dirt cheap, you know. So talk, talk about your deck. You ended up in this, like, weird Court of Calling deck that right. had some infinite wing conditions. Like, right. what happened going on there? So the idea was that, you know, play a versatile deck that several of the cards combo with several other cards. Yep. Um, and... The survival was a late ad. I was like, man, I kind of forgot about survival. And actually, it ended up being bad for me because um, I ended up having to pitch stuff. Not for, I was pitching cog engines for cog engines. Oh, uh, okay. I was never pitching for, like, other than pitching for Shalai, I was never picking for the win con. So ultimately what happened with this deck was the idea was I have lots of tutors. I have lots of ways that I can get, do things with infinite mana with Finale of Devastation, which can just win outright. Shalai, which can just win outright. Um, uh, quick thing. Uh, I agree on Mask would have been great. See you, Lane. Talk to you later. Yeah. Keep going with all Shalai. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Shalai would, you know, a lot of cards that could just win outright. I yes. had a lot of sat combos. Crater Hoof for the mistake pick uh, because... Really? Well... Um, it ended up hating out. I, I thought somebody else. No, maybe not. No, actually. no. I mean, Alec it should have been um, Ronus that can pump other people. I needed to get through with like a singular oh. target. I didn't have enough creatures for Crater Hoof to matter. That's fair. Right. So it you... needed to be Ronus that I could pump with infinite mana. This guy. Yeah. Okay. That's what it needed to be. That's completely fair. Yeah. Um, the... I do think that survival, like it was odd that you didn't take Baskin Root Walla, right? You never got that. Again, survival was a really late ad, so it okay. wasn't in my original strategy list. It was just kind of like I was looking over other drafts that morning. Got it. And I was like, oh, survival would make sense in here. Sure. Um, so what ended up happening was I often had, so I'd have in, like game one, game one against you. I had infinite mana. Yes. I had nothing to do with it. Right. Um, I won that game just by beating down with creatures. But you gave um, me like four turns to do. Right. Anything. But I gave you like four turns. I won several games on the back of Bitter Ordeal, sure. just through stacking out. So that was fine. Um, Bitter Ordeal, I think that that card. Hold on, let's Brandon see when, got pissed right after that card because yeah, he wanted it for his he deck. He des- desperately wanted it. Let's see when uh, when Bitter Ordeal is usually taken. Yeah, I think it's about where I took it. Maybe a because little bit later. For I don't think the other format ever took this oh, it's card. Only two, twice. Yeah, right. it's just been me twice. It's been you twice, <laughs> and it, generally around forty. Yeah. Um. But yeah, Bitter Ordeal has proven to be very good in this this format. Even I mean, like against you, like it already has a lot of decks. Even sacking four cards, if you just get rid of four cards and get, cast for, cast for five, you're handicapping a lot of decks. True. I mean, severely. Um, so hyphenated is wondering. Would you have even played Basking Root Wall, given that, like, you have survival, so you can make it happen. Right. Uh, you can just ditch it and get it into play. Uh, I guess, like, Vengevine may have made the cut if you had been doing that. So, right. Um, I think that it's just a different deck than what I was going for. Okay. Right. And that was why survival didn't work out, was because I was pitching combo pieces for combo pieces. Right. Sure. Pitching answers for answers. Um, so ultimately what would happen was I would, it just, the combos were too big. Yeah. Right? They, they all were three They were all combos. three or more. Right, in cases like Vizier, Sack Outlet, uh, you know, need Vizier, Sack Outlet, and Red Cap, or, yeah. you know, so like gaining life off of Kitchen Pinks, that was just a buffer. Obviously, it's not a, a great thing, but right. it can buffer me to where I can get the other piece. Like Ooze was the backup um, to be able to, if, if pieces had died, uh, Recruiter, again, Infinite Man, I can dig for whatever creatures I want. Yeah. But the issue ultimately came down to. I it was too big of combos, right? So I think the right. two card Monty style that I picked in STL VRD two. Yes. This was a kind of thinking about that, like similar build, but I added more cards to the Montes. That makes sense. And it fell apart because of that. Like the the games I won is when I was just hate bears. Right. And I do wonder what would have happened if you had done instead kind of Nate Heiss's deck where mm-hmm. it was just all elves. Right. Right. Like I think that you were in the seat where green was very clearly open and you could have done anything oh, with yeah. that. I think just a straight mono elf deck well I, would have been powerful i have been thinking about uh, the power i was looking over that old elf deck yeah. that didn't have staff of domination in it right because Rafello staff of domination just wins yes right so and there's or a lot guys of cradle right or, or like a million other things like six man anything that makes six mana and staff of domination yeah. just wins so i do think that that's pretty viable in here somewhere um but yeah i mean call a uh, court of calling was horrible um, really? Oh yeah, it hit two creatures. It whiffed a lot. Sure. It hit two creatures a lot, but it is. It was just so. Even with the smaller, denser deck, 
Do you mean Court of Calling? Or Not do you Court, mean Court of Fine, sorry. Okay. Uh, collected Company. That makes sense. Yeah, Collected Company was horrible. That's um, just a, such a random card, right? Yeah. Like, you are rolling the dice. And uh, that's not what you need to do. Finale, I never got to cast for over 10. I always had to use it for value. <laughs> of course. Um, well, I mean, I had infinite mana. I mean, it just single-handedly wins with... I feel like once you have infinite mana and a tutor for a creature, you should win anyway. Right. But I lost <laughs> one, my, one of my main ones, like Ballista, True. to tutor True. sore. But, you know, you tutor well, like for you that. tutor for Shalai and then just win. But, right? I mean, the thing about Finale is, is that it's so great is it can tutor for Shalai. Yes. Or it can get something back from the yard. I mean, that's the thing about Finale Devastation, that if they kill a piece you can get a piece back from your yard. Fair enough. I, I can right. see that. Uh, I don't know. I I think I... I won several games with Shalai. I mean, just as a beater and just giving me hexproof. Um, but oof. I mean, I, I, against artifact decks, I was tight, obviously. Right. Um, Veil of Summer was... I, that my, card seems amazing. It, it, I cast it against you, and then you countered it, I think? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it was painful. I was like, oh, I got you, I got you. And then I didn't. Yeah, um, so finale, bad pick. Saying about that one. Yeah. Uh, okay, but I mean, your deck still performed, right? You went 3 4. Yeah, I went 3 4. I beat um, Cody, uh, he misplayed, and I wrecked Jeff and wrecked Alex. Uh, I wrecked Alex in two, or they may have been both been three. I know Jeff was three. He comboed off of me game one, and I played with his head for a little while. It was funny. I kept not scooping when he thought I should scoop, and I just kept wanting him to show me. And he kept, but he almost misplayed because of it, because yeah. he just didn't. He was just he like, was so "What do you? What do you have? What do you have?" And I had nothing. I was just making him show me. And then the next games, I just you know, oof, lose. So and... I'm going to title these decks uh, because I'm I'm just going to like try yeah. to give, give them high level titles to kind of show both how focused they are as well as uh, just give some oh, content for Real quick, for them. funny thing. So this is, I was yeah. watching the, the draft commentary, and this shows how hard the draft commentary is, cause especially when we're down here scrolling. Yeah. I had some picks, and like the double black on, lay, on uh, double black on, uh, red cap and down here, yeah. and they kept saying, "Well, in the commentary, they're like, oh, you know, his 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 mana can't support that. His mana can't support that." And like, but like, you look right up here. I had Emerald Pearl, Bayou Verdant, Flats, Windswept, yep. Savannah. Um, no, my man. Oh, uh, <laughs> then Noble, right? Like, I I had one mana problem ever, and that was. I could not, after doing stuff, I could not drop, I didn't have a third white to drop Shalai and combo off. I had to wait to the next turn to drop Shalai and combo off. So interesting, where does Bayou usually get picked? Because normally, okay, normally round 12, yeah. this time it got picked round I, uh I should have gone fetch a, I, I just messed up in my, my synchrosy there. But, but, I mean, okay, so let's say Verdant Catacombs then, because I, I think that just lands went crazy early this, it this time. It did, and that's part of my fault. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, and fault. I mean, it's, it's a right. good strategy. Well, and I, but it's, no one else was taking it, right? We've right. discussed this with Red Deck. No one, I knew no one else was taking my stuff, yeah. other than, I, I thought may, maybe Ballista, but, you know, I didn't expect it to go where it went. Um, so I just figured I'd go ahead and take my lands. Sure. And, oh, I had Death Right too, yeah, for fixing as well. That makes sense. Yeah, so I just figured go ahead and take my lands and then, you know, get myself set up. I mean, no one knew what I was fully doing until pick 13, or pick, uh, thir yeah, 13, 14 with right. the Devoted Vizier. That makes sense. Giver was too early. I should have taken something else there. So I'm going to title your deck as, like, Vizier Combo, yeah, whatever. Vizier it's Combo. Vizier Combo. Yeah. Uh, Cody's deck was clearly Reanimator. Yeah. Brandon's deck was whatever the heck like it could be wheels it could he be, had so much going yeah, on yeah he had a million things that, i mean obviously really i thought he, i think he thought he was going to get narset i mean he had to leave old sure to go with the wheels um but he had he had a wheel deck he had a crucible deck he had painter grindstone usually like a million things yeah all happening at once dark depths was in there he had lots of just so much value it was, but all of the value it requires at least another card. Right. right. He kind of tried the two card Monty thing, but without the power of Lotus. Right. So it was just interesting, kind of no tutors, or sorry, he had demonic tutor, but he had way fewer ways. It's also right. a channel deck for some reason. It's Sylvan. Sure. Chan I mean, channel Amrakul. Yeah. I mean, he was just doing powerful things. I think that was his idea. It's like, I'm going to, you know, two, three card Monty's, but all much more powerful than a lot of other people are doing. You know, like channel Amrakul. Ooh, yeah, right. <laughs> but it, it was just interesting, right? Like, yeah, I guess channel mind slaver, just right. like interesting it, stuff. His deck had so many lines. I was watch, I was commentating on one of his games that he lost to Cody, and there was a line he missed, and I told him about it later, and he was like, "Oh, you shouldn't have told me that." I'm so upset <laughs> now because if he had done the line, I think he wins the game. Uh, and that deck was so complicated watching it. Yes, I'm trying to remember what the line was, but it, it involved he was pitching. 
uh, he was doing something and or getting ready to windfall, and there was something else he could have done prior to the windfall. And had he done that, uh, he like just wins the game. And that's kind of Hyphen's point, right? It's that channel into a wheel can be huge, right? right. There's so many things you can do before wheeling that just become broken. Um, so Blind's deck was Time Vault, uh, but specifically uh, Blind's Mystic deck Forge. was Mystic Forge, right? And he claimed it early, just in case he staked his yep. claim. That's and that's the right call, right? If you have got a corner yep. piece for your deck, yep, take it. Uh, Joe's deck was a just a rug tempo deck that sometimes kiki jikied. So right? Joe and I, and I told her like uh, after round one or two, Joe broke slightly the spirit of the thing. Right? Is he tweaked his main deck? He wasn't pre sideboarding, sure. But he you know there's no deck list, so I mean so he dropped out the sneak attack combo stuff sure. and focused strictly in on a rug kiki jiki, and then he won like. Four out of the or four out of the next five. So, so like as the judge of this format, I have no problem with that whatsoever. Right, right? we're playing. Don't be a dick, Ariel. At which point, like you're not pre sideboard. It's not like he took out the exactly. Sneak that's right. I had no bad. problem with it. I was just right. like, we 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 have said don't, but also that's perfectly within spirit. Right, exactly. He, you're definitely following along with the spirit of the format. Right. Um, if your deck's bad, fix it. But don't right. you don't know what you're playing up against, and if you assume you do, then that's when you're not right. going to be invited back. Right, yeah. So, he, <laughs> so. He, I think he cut the uh, sneak attack through the breach stuff and went and strictly into a control kiki. That makes sense. And then he won out a lot after that. Yes. Right? That, that, and that's interesting, right? Because we kind of have seen these two-card Monty decks do very well, but we've also seen decks that try to go too, uh, too, splash around too much, like mm-hmm. Brandon's and Joe's in the early rounds, where focusing in on one or two strategies can be way better. Um, my deck was just mono blue control that had no win conditions. Yeah, uh, I mean, it, <laughs> Elaine, it had enough four to three games, right? Who'd you beat? You beat me. I beat you. I beat Blyden, uh, and I beat Alec. Okay. Uh, Brandon, Brandon sacked out on me. I'm just gonna call it right now. Uh, that that game should have been done, but uh, bad things happened. Mm-hmm. But that's kind of the power of his deck, right? right. A million two card combos. Um, and if my deck just doesn't draw anything but counter spells, eventually he'll get there. Yeah, so you picked Ashiok, right? I think that's where Ashiok's going to end up landing in the long run. That card's so good. Ashiok was very strong. Yeah. Um, I took it, I think, 29th last time, I want to say, at, at VRD2. Um, so, I think this card, and I said afterward, I think this card will end up in the top 15-ish. Sure. But I think right around where you are is probably, uh, probably right. So, so yeah, it's been picked... Two times, uh, round roughly round 22. And you picked it 15? I picked it round 18. 18. So I probably picked it uh, 26 six, six, four. Yeah. Yeah, we're there. So, yeah. So I think this is about right. It'll end up in that 15 to 18 spot, maybe a little higher. The card is so strong in a 40-card format. And yep. it's just, like, I'm running a, a Planeswalkers, like, actually, I had Modern a couple weeks ago, the first guy after my first couple of walkers, because it's mostly standard walkers outside of Ren and Six and yep. Jace the Mind Sculptor. The guy said, is this just stuff you own dot deck? <laughs> but I turn I turn one Ashiot Dream Render. Yep. And, or turn two Ashiot Dream Render, and, like, this guy just crumbled. Oh, man. Right. Oh, apparently Ashiak didn't get picked in the in the Pacific VRD. Okay. The one that just happened. We haven't gotten the data for that one pulled in yet, but it will show up at some point here. Yeah. Um, we have the first two already in our data set. Um, but yeah, so so this card, the reason I like it, um, number one is it turns off fetch lands. That's just huge by itself. Yep. Uh, number two, you're right. It can sometimes mill people out and in a 40 card format. That's useful. Honestly, that never happened in any of the dream games I played. You hit so much value came. against me, though. Yeah, that's where I was going to go next, is that it, it doesn't mill people out. What it does do, though, is exile people's win conditions. So it's kind of like Bitter Ordeal that's just a like a scattershot Bitter Ordeal mm. where you're hitting random cards, and when all these cards are playing two-card combos and you hit half of two of them, like, you're just you're killing their win conditions. Right. Um, and because it's not just going to the graveyard, which all these decks have ways to recur from the graveyard, you're fine. Um, you're actually getting them exiled. Nobody is playing uh, that stupid white card to get stuff back from exile. Right. Or Griff Sweeper or something. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. I mean, I wanted Ashiok in my deck. I, it, it's I, not good because it mills people out. It's good because it exiles win conditions right. and because it stops searching. Yeah, it's it, just really strong. It's very strong. Agreed. But it, it was it's kind of the reason I drafted it isn't the reason it ended up being good, which I thought was interesting. Okay. Um, True Name, obviously, you know, you had... Which, True Name was an all-star. Yeah. Uh, True Name reminded me of a card I missed that I had on my early list that I somehow didn't make it when I converted my list to, from my phone to my to paper mm-hmm. was Plague Engineer. Um, Plague Engineer is good. Because <laughs> I was like, God, I wish I had Plague Engineer. <laughs> yeah, and where did Plague Engineer go previously? It did previously? not go. Uh, Previously, it went... Uh, did it? 
I thought it went in the it second one. Might have, yeah. Uh, Plague Mirror. No, okay, yeah. no, Plague Engineer at all. Yeah. So Plague Mirror, apparently. I know it was on our sh- so on a couple of our short lists. We discussed it in yeah. the second one, but I don't think it went. That's reasonable. So for my deck, uh, just mistakes. Like, during the draft, obviously, like I said, I was super sick. I slept four hours. Lots of excuses for reasons. Um, I ended up having about seven or eight too many counter spells that could have been sideboard cards. Additionally, I probably had two addition two win conditions I didn't need. When I got you... freaked out by people in the booth who were just like, how are you going to win with no win conditions? And right. I'm like, oh, shit, maybe I don't need win conditions. When did you take racism the card? Because fuck uh, that card. I took racism uh, super late, and I should have not taken it at all. Oh, God. Uh, Invoke Prejudice, I took 30 first. Yeah, it's it's pretty good against at stopping me. Shalai. <laughs> it's, it's good at destroying me. <laughs> well, it, it was yeah. only good against Shalai, and you're done. Right. You could play everything else. Right, right, right. Um, yeah. Because, like, by the time you get it out in turn four... Let's pull out racism. Um, so, Invoke Prejudice. So, this... Huh, it doesn't have an exclamation point in this uh, in the Scryfall. Okay. Mm-hmm. Invoke Prejudice. Uh, I, J, P, R, J. Oh, man, look at you, sociology professor. Okay. Huh, you think a sociology professor knows how to spell prejudice? Yeah, yeah I'm surprised. <laughs> Who would have thunk it? So, basically, it makes every creature card cost double its cost, assuming you're not playing creatures <laughs> you like You never me. even process what it actually does. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, this card is so... I, I wish they would re-release this card with new art and collector's number and yes. ban people playing with this art, to be honest. I'm not there, but sure, whatever. Uh, the, I mean, the if card... we as judges ban racist or sexist playmats, right... Sure. Then this card should be banned with this art. Uh, but this is probably a conversation off stream. Okay. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so the card itself, though, uh, ended up being good specifically against you and very bad against everybody else. Right. Because the only time it's good is when people are playing fairly large creatures that are going to hit the board after turn four, which is almost never in this format. Right. Um, so, like, I thought, hey, there's a bunch of creature decks. I should probably get an answer to creature decks. This is a good blue answer to creature decks without really thinking through what it actually meant. And everybody playing two drops and not missing their fourth land drop just meant that it was mostly irrelevant. Right, makes sense. Um, so, in hindsight, definitely wouldn't have played this. I wouldn't have drafted Terramander. Uh, I would have probably. I, I really thought Cunning Wish was great, and I wish I had thought of that earlier. I, th- I think it deserved to go earlier than round 40, even though no one else is going to take it. Yeah, you started a little wish run there. Right? I can't remember which way we were going at that point. Oh, but. Actually, uh, Joe got two wishes before I did. Oh, okay, he had Burning Wish. So he, he, he had the living down here. I, or, he yeah. took Burning Wish early because right. I was just like, hey, you should take Burning Wish. You have a bunch of sorceries. <laughs> right. So he took it, never played it. Uh, he took then Living Wish, and I'm like, well, if he take Living Wish, that might trigger Elaine into taking Cunning Wish, so right. I'll take it. Right. But yeah, Cunning Wish, I had planned to take the 45th pick, but I got scared. Um, that card was great. I, I just never had to play a, a bunch of stuff. Like right. Flusterstorm, I never brought in. Uh, and Blue Sun Zenith, I never brought in, even though it was my primary win condition. Right. But yeah, like, Terramander, Bribery, there's a bunch of these cards you that bribe, I... Bribery Bribery's good against me. Bribery seemed fine. Yeah, it was, good. again, good against me, that's about it. There were a lot of these <laughs> cards that I drafted I mean, bri- that I didn't need. Bribery's problem is it's five. I mean, bri- Bribery's yes. actually really good against a lot of these decks, I think. Agreed. I mean, like, you bribe out, you know, a, a Grizzle Brand. Bribery's five, and you didn't have any of the Moxes or anything to make it faster. I had a Sapphire, but okay. not enough, yeah. Right, but Bribery in, like... A controlly deck with um, uh, Noble Hierarch, right? Like you know, but in my deck in noble. particular, my deck in particular, right? I, no, it I wasn't would, great. I would cast Bribery, then be like, oh well, all your good creatures are apparently in your hand, and I just tapped out and paid right. five, and now I can't counter your big creature you're about to cast next. Or turn. remind it was you took Shly because it was the best thing available because everything else was just coggy creatures that exactly. didn't, you know. Right, so I think it was good against like two decks in particular, right. but it also relied on them not having it in hand, right. and me not having to counter their, ne- their spell the next turn. Yeah, I agree, Hyphenated. Bribery definitely, I think, is a, a it's a strong pick, it's a strong sideboard card. Uh, Mystic Confluence is great, Archmage that Charm is great. So good. Disrupting Shoal ended up being pretty good too. I think just the value of free counter spells, I mm-hmm. had appreciated, but never really understood until playing this. Right. The free counter spells are insane. Dismember Shackles. went way too late. <sighs> God. Thirty third pick dismember. When does that usually go? Because that card was dismembers insane. why you won game two. <laughs> yeah. Let's see, dismember normally goes twenty seven on around twenty seven. Yeah, so I got a thirteen picks later. Yeah. Um, or no, I got eight picks later. Um, and actually, hyphen did a bunch of interesting uh, stats work to analyze which cards ended up having the highest impact on decks. And I'm probably framing I, this wrong, but it was... Yeah. The, the concept is basically which cards... Win the most. ...cause decks to win the most. 
So, right, like... Which winning decks cards were in the most winning decks? There we go, right. yeah. Uh, and it's more complicated than that. There's lots of data. Uh, you can check out his tweet for that. Uh, or their tweet for that, sorry. Um, and it's uh, it was just really interesting to see this member on that list, because it, it makes sense, It was sense, the top, though. wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was the top, uh, and, it, and it was the lowest... Sorry, it wasn't the top card, I don't think, but it was the card that had the highest pick number, so it was, like, the latest card okay. drafted that had the highest impact. Because this is a card that's drafted 23rd pick and ends up being in the top three most impactful cards in a format. Like, that's huge. Um, so, yeah, good call, Double Fry. Thanks for linking that. Um, super interesting data set. I want to, I think that's worth exploring a lot yeah. more. Um, uh, but, yeah, I, this member is just a great card and deserves to get picked much How earlier, are Shackles for you? Shackles, uh, I never activated. I had it and I had the threat of activation. I was, I was so scared of it. So um, I mean, I think I. Uh, um, Two out of three games, I ordealed it. So <laughs> yeah, that's exactly why. Yeah. Is, like, I think if it had stuck, it would have won me two games. But it just like, right? It was perfectly fine. It would have been good. I just it didn't come up. Um, before, before but I certainly move, don't think about. Before we move to Elaine's, was Scepter main deck or did you bring that in? Scepter was main deck. Okay. I, I kept Scepter main deck. I got Scepter counterspell a couple times. Uh-huh. In I'm hindsight, well <laughs> I don't know if that was correct or not because tapping out for it was rough. Game um, two, so so I mean, if, if you don't die to the next turn, it's just so so much value. Yes, especially with all your. It was the right play, right? Because here's okay. the thing: with all of your one mana and free counterspells, mm-hmm. basically what you're saying is. Yeah, you got to turn one against me, actually. Yes. But what you're saying is, even if you're doing it turn two, say kill me now, or you're going facing at minimum two to three counter spells a turn, right? Completely fair. Like because yeah. you have so many ones, you can pay for it and still have another counter. Yes. Like it was so hard to play around. I wish I hadn't taken it 37th, or I, I thought I took it the round I thought of it, right? Because I didn't do any planning. Right. Uh, I wish I had thought about it round 20. And instead of drafting all of a lot of these counter spells, made a point of drafting two mana instants that could fit underneath it. Right. Because I think my deck was not set up for it well, which meant that I was like Scepter putting a Flusterstorm underneath it or something weird, right? Like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it wasn't actually Flusterstorm. Right. It was something like, do I put Spell Snare underneath it? Right. Like, it's That's just a bad. lot of weird questions of uh, like, do you put a miscalculation under an Isochron Scepter? Right. Probably not. It's not very good. Right. But it's kind of what I there was a space I ended up being in. Um, convince, because I drafted a lot of conditional counter spells. The score so highly is because the colors they get removed are worse than blue, so only the heavy blue decks get this member in. <laughs> oh, that's a. Yeah, I think that's that is a good legit. hypothesis. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Isaac Scepter was perfectly good. I wish I had drafted my deck a little differently. Uh, Standstill was a complete wasted pick. Right. I didn't even play it, never brought it in. Standstill's, uh, yeah. I thought it was going to be solid with the assumption that like I can go stand st- or I can go f- time walk into standstill right. in the past turn and then force them to give me three cards but three cards isn't nearly as impactful in this format right. as it is in vintage so yeah I mean it's, it's like the in legacy outside of like land still I mean you yes. just don't see standstill much anymore because the answer to standstill is I just pay it and you take the cards and I move on right I don't like cards don't matter right I can't let it disrupt my game plan that much so I think it's the same in here I think yeah uh, Library of Alexandria was great, and everyone's a fool for thinking it's not. Gush was also great and was incredible, and everyone's a fool for thinking that it's bad. Because mm-hmm. Gush just, like, drew me into two counter spells at one point. Like, it's just wonderful. I think Library is great in your deck. Yes. I, I think Library is, like, mediocre a lot of the time. That's reasonable. But I think your deck is the what it's Library is made for. I don't even think Elaine's deck, would the Library, would be good, and because she's got more threat she's playing out, Yeah. so she's not going to be as tight. You are much more draw-go, and I'm going to kill you with this very Conclave. I think right. Ice Scepter would also have been great in Brandon's deck, with the number of wheels he has. Oh, God. Um, yeah. and, and I could see it I could see it in a couple decks, but yeah, you're right. It's, right. It requires a special deck. But yeah, li- Library is a very, very special card. Uh, your deck, it is quite amazing in. Yes. But even other control decks, I don't necessarily think so. Force of Will is as good as it, it's there. It's fourth round, I think, is yeah. perfectly reasonable for it. And Force of Negation makes sense where it is in Elaine's deck. It yeah. cards just, especially in this format, there's so much that you want to be countering that are... I should have taken Force over Snapcaster Mage. Snapcaster was fine, but Force would have been much better. Um, okay, so Elaine's cool. deck, Blue White Control, Classic, Walkers, <sighs> and Mentor. And just answers, right? I mean, that's the, that was the thing. So, I mean, let's scroll down here towards the end. I mean, we had... We have the meddling mage says shout out to Pakula. Right, right. Who was watching on stream? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't think she even played it. Right. <laughs> uh, but treachery, I know she did play. At least she brought oh, it yeah. in against me. Um, you know, obviously the walkers, but council's judgment. That card ended up killing a true nemesis, like it's designed to do. Yeah. Well, council's judgment was made. Devout decree. Uh, I, she brought in against me. I think she might have exiled a, a 
Devout Decree. Is that the one that... It's the new... One of the new Cycle of Hate. So the new Cycle of Hate cards are all pretty good. Uh, oh, so, okay. Uh, veil of... Uh, my my veil, veil of Summer. Right. And then there's this. Aether Gust, which is not a counterspell, but counterspell. It to put puts a spell, red or green spell, or permanent... Yep. ...or, or card on top pot or bottom of the owner's library. They choose. Okay. So it's Vincer in that it doesn't actually counter the spell. It cool. returns it so it can get around uncounterable. Yep. And it also affects permanence, right? Nice. Um, so that's another solid, solid hate card, it, it, red and green. Um, she got acid rain. She got yeah, so many good she answers. She just taunted me with that. <laughs> I, I wish, like, I, I, the thing I was really sad about in these late picks, I'm just like, well, I don't know what to take, so I'm going to take more counter spells, which felt awful. I wish I had had my list of that sideboard. I couldn't find my sideboard draft that we had talked about. Right. I was just like, what are all of the hate cards? And I just couldn't find them. Um, it was really sad. Because I, like, Acid Rain, things like that, I just, like, couldn't figure out what the good hate cards were. Yeah, hyphenated on it again. Yeah, I, 100%. I mean, I think that, you can't say it's bad, because it's a land. Yeah. But it's, you know. But um, it's also, if you're taking it in the second, third round, or even first round, as it's gone before, and it's not something silly. your deck's built around, then you just drafted a bad land. Yeah, where do we think, where does the library usually go? Uh... It's been taken every draft, right. on average in round five. Okay. So yeah, interesting. Um, and then Alec, uh, Alec. And well, hold on, let's, let's oh, come back okay. here real quick. Yeah. So I mean, to fair time round, we're um, Thada Adele bad pick. That that should not have been there. Yeah, it's I a mean, fine card. She should take a true name over it there. I mean, yeah. Sure. Um, again, I think at some point you start reacting to yes these things right to these crazy you know artifact shenanigans um so teferi time raveler is one that i really almost took again i've said in the second vrd i should have backed off red when I thought eric was in red and yep. gone into white and picked teferi um and i think this is probably where it ends up in this format about in this five to ten range yeah because just because of the shutting off oppositional instance right it's just so strong there um i know you're a huge fan of narset do you think she's better than jace I do. Ooh, interesting. Okay. I do. Um, it's close. Yeah. It's cheaper. Um, the thing about Nar so, and again, particularly Lane's deck, Elaine locked me out with Narset, Vendillion Click, Caracas, <laughs> and I cried. I don't yeah. think I've cried in a Magic game in a long time. <laughs> like I didn't even see it at first. She's like V Click. I had no card. I had one card in hand. I drew. She V clicks me on my draw step, so I put it to the bottom, and I go to draw. She goes Narset. I'm like, oh crap. Okay, sure. Yeah. And then she, you know, on her turn, she swings for three, <laughs> and at the end of turn, bounces it with Caracas, and I'm like, scoop. <laughs> that is so bad. Yeah. It was that. I mean, that card is two halves of a dig on, dig through time, right? Yes. It digs so deep, and in this format, it's seen one tenth of your deck. Yeah. You do have the same problem with it that you have the collected company, though, where it, sometimes you just whiff, or sometimes you but don't find the card you're looking for. it's doing more, though. Correct. It's getting you something every time, yes. almost. Like, you're going to whiff occasionally. Yeah. But it's getting you... It, it hits more than company does. It's non-land. Non-land, non-creature. Non-land, non-creature. Yeah, okay. So correct. it hits more than company does, because it doesn't have the CMC. So there were several times I had f four... High, or five creatures higher than CMC3. Yeah. There were several times where I saw Yogg, Shalai, Finks. <laughs> you know? Wow. Um, so it hits more. It shuts off some of opponent's things. Yeah. Like, and it's three. If Jace was three, Jace would be stronger. Sure. But I think comparatively, it's really close. I don't know. I, I It's just so strong. Gyre reached Sanitarium hyphens checking about. That's funny. I can definitely see that card being see in play as well. Uh, I can't imagine it would get picked anywhere before, like, I don't know, round 40. But, I mean, yeah, this card, making each player draw a card and then discard a card, yeah. seems fine with Leovold and Narsa. Well, I mean, there's a... This is a silly EDH shenanigan, right? But, like, I had a game where I had three Rowan emblems. So that... <laughs> it, her emblem... Sure. Copies activated abilities. Well, let's pull or, up. Actually, I had two, two Rowan emblems. There's a new Rowan, so... Right. You mean the original Rowan. The original Rowan, right? So her emblem is basically... Um, uh, Rings of Bright Earth for activated abilities. Yep. Okay. And I had Narset out, right? So I activated Dak Faden targeting somebody three times. Yes. Dak Faden is draw two, discard two. Yes. So what that amounted to, because of Narset, was draw one, discard six. <laughs> that's so rude. <laughs> right? So, I mean, like, those effects with... So, I mean, that's a little silliness. Yeah. Um, but those effects with things like <laughs> Narset are just so potent, you know? 
Yeah, so Hyven points out that if you just have a Narset in play and you Gyro Reach Sanitarian, yeah. you have the same thing as that uh, yeah. Caracas. Yeah, because you can do it in speed on their draw step. And know. it's in the land slot as well, which, yeah. just to talk about Library of Alexandria, is obviously super powerful. Yeah. Um, anything else from Elaine's deck? Shadow of Doubt seems Shadow very good. I yeah. wish I could have gotten Containment Priest uh, against a lot of these decks. You know, <laughs> it's good against, good against me, good against Reanimator. Um, Containment Priest. What is the wording on Containment Priest? Can you pull it up real quick? Uh, it's non-token. It has to come from your hand, right? Uh, no, no. It's if it would, because you can blink with a draw the displacer right, okay. to exile permanently. Enter the battlefield, and it wasn't. Ca- okay, there was a, a funny one we figured out that I don't. I thought it was Containment Priest, but it wasn't. Something that oh it was grafted your cage stopping Mystic Forge, uh, nice yeah because <laughs> cards can't be cast from the library correct. Uh, um, okay, so Alec ended up starting with the Black Lotus right. correct. Second round Tinker. Um, I love is... Alec's draft up till pick seven. So Alec in, in the booth said that he would have taken Tinker over Ancestral Recall if he were in the second seat, which uh-huh. is super interesting. That's 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 a statement. That's pick. something. I kind of wish it had happened, because that would have uh, definitely changed things up. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Ore Broker. What is Ore Broker? Lore Broker. Is it? Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. Lore Broker has never been played. Yeah. It's the goblin from um, the... Oh, no, no. I was thinking the... It's just... A, okay. Each okay. each player loots. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Um, okay, but Alex deck, he ended up... Yeah, up to... Uh, up to Arcbound. I love everything up to Arcbound. Foundry Inspector's fine, too. Yeah, no, I mean, there's good picks afterward, but I think that's where his draft changes yes. the looks, right? Uh, the 12th pick Hardened Scales is where... Well, 11th pick Chalice of the Void is also right. suspect. 11, 12 suspect. But the, the Hardened Scales, I think, that's where it went off the rails. Right. Because up, up up to that point, it's like completely reasonable deck. So, I mean, he's Hardened Scales, Ravager, uh, Ballista, Overseer... There's just so many cards here that you might want, and, and Hardened Scales is never going to go. Right, yeah. Right, like, even just Tormod's Crypt, right? Tormod's Crypt should have been, like, 10th pick if that, if this is really where you're going. Right. Uh, Karn, Sign of Urza could have gone much higher. Like, a lot of these cards... I mean, and I'm going to be honest. Like, if, he's, if he ends up in this aggro thing, right? Where's yeah. Skull Clamp? Not Skull Clamp. Uh, where's um, Cranial Plating? Cranial plating. Yeah, true. And Cranial Plating's banned in Modern, right? We're, right. And, and it's not at all a slam on him, right? He's just not not familiar with this uh, right. Not familiar with this format. I mean, like, the artifact aggro idea is interesting, but I think there's just better aggro that's less hateable then. Because, again, the problem of the artifact deck is so much shuts it down. Um, well, and I think an artifact aggro deck could actually be incredibly powerful. Um, oh, Plating is legal in Modern. I'm sorry. Uh, good yeah. call. Um, but, I mean... This deck could be incredibly powerful, but you don't need to go into the Hardened Scales version of it. Right, right, right. Like, there's just so many other cards that could fit in here. Um, yeah, and especially like when he adds Rite of Passage later. That's just... Yeah, that one was totally... He was just really excited about right. getting the combo. Just being cute. Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, that's fine. But, I mean, it, he... he, he for his fun. first draft, right. he had a very respectable... He didn't get shut out. He didn't right. go uh, zero four or one four. Uh, he ended up getting two wins, he which did, is completely reasonable. He didn't uh, Brent Yard, you know. Oof, oof. Uh, we don't speak of him. We go. He didn't go the full 07 Yard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> didn't didn't go the Yard. I love it. Uh, but no, I mean, for your first time showing up, uh, not really knowing what's going on, right. going 2-5 is completely fine. Right? This this format is really hard. Uh, we purposely try to get a lot of new blood in here, uh, which means that people like Elaine that are veterans of this format with three tournaments right. can just end up wrecking. Um so yeah, I don't know. We'll see. At some point, we'll probably have a lane have to retire. Um, <laughs> but yeah, as as of right now, the the way the system works is that if you take first or second place, you get buy in back into the format. So you gar- yeah, you're you're guaranteed a slot in the next round. So uh, Elaine and uh, was it Jeff? Jeff. Jeff ended up taking second. So yeah. Elaine and Jeff uh, got get an invite back to the next one if they can make it. Um, but yeah, other than that, we prioritize new players coming in. So. There should be a lot of new faces coming in next time, hopefully. So I have mentioned maybe moving to the booth next time with Eric. Elaine also mentioned moving to the booth next time. Ooh, okay. Uh, so, you know, we'll see. Yeah. And then, Definitely. You know. and, and Eric might come back in and play for all right, we know. Right, right, right. Uh, Eric really liked the booth. He, I think he, he wants the booth. <laughs> he's pretty good at it. <laughs> yeah. He, he's definitely very good at it. Um, so, but no, this, this I think, ended up being a very good event. Yeah. Um, we actually went super smoothly. We ended up having very little issues that we had the first time. So the first right. time it was kind of... We 
had like a half an hour break or something between uh, between the actual draft and rounds. This time we had Kyle sitting back there printing out cards, grabbing all the cards for everybody that we ended up having very little time uh, in between, if any. I think we just had two interviews and then people got back in, yeah. which is huge. The um, I did get to do some side play of the ball lightning deck. Mm. Um, it went three and three in games, not matches. Did you all, do all game ones? Uh, uh, yeah, we did all game ones. Okay. We went three and three in game ones. So that's and and that deck is going to do worse after side play. Yeah, and it was it overperformed in the games that it won. I think. Okay. So uh, it felt explosive. Yes. But if it didn't hit the wheel of fortune in there, that explosion died really quick. And it went away. So um, it was interesting. I mean, three and three. It was probably, It did a lot of damage really quick, but it it it, it ran out of steam. You know, it would ritual, ritual, ritual. Drop a bunch of things, and if it didn't hit the couple cards to reset, unearth and or some of the persistent things to reset it up, it it, it ran out of steam. So. That makes sense. The deck that I, man, I'm I'm just annoyed that I had to play in this draft because I had so many ideas. Right, like I had a sweet, uh, net, I had a sweet. Um, a recurring nightmare deck in mm-hmm. mind. Ooh. I had a great uh, crop rotation, dark depths, and nat and oath of druids deck in mm-hmm. mind. Uh, and I've always wanted to build in Doomsday and figure out how to make that actually work. I I think it can happen, especially with Gush being as undervalued as it is. Um, so I, Cody and I have been discussing a lot. Yeah. And we discussed a mill deck. Okay. Like you know, glimpse the unthinkable. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, you get you're going to get all of the high end mill cards. You're, you know, you can get Ashiok quick and early. You get glimpse, and I don't know. I think with the, with the right counter spells, just counters and mill. Sure. I think that it could have. Uh, obviously, it folds something like a ley line of uh, sanctity. Right. But um, once you mention the counter spells, I'm way more on board with this. In, in the initial like mill deck, I'm just kind right. of like, are there really enough? Like, are there 20 mill cards that you'd actually want to play? And there's probably not. Right. There's probably 10. Um, but 10 is plenty, right? right? If you're milling 10 cards, I mean, you get Jace Memory Adept. When, right. Jace went 25th round this time. Right. I mean, Mind's Desire, uh, what is it? Not, not Mind's Desire. Uh, the one that mills until you hit four lands for three mana. Oh, okay. Uh, you know. Three land. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, I don't remember. Right. Glimpse okay. the Unthinkable. A lot of you, I mean, in, in, Mill was tried in PDX2, and that attempt, it did not So I'm going to pull it up. Uh, at fair warning, everybody, the faces above are not going to be accurate for the people that are in this, but at least we can see uh, see what he's talking about here. See what they're talking about here. Uh, we have, there should be a Mill deck in here. Glimpse. Glimpse the Unthinkable is not taken in PDX2. Oh, PDX1. Okay. Do, 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 do. SM drafted it. Okay. Okay. So Mox Jet, Sa- Alexandria. Right. So taking Snap, the black deck. Obviously goes in there, right? Yep. It's good. Dress. Then boom, Glimpse. So you're hitting 10 cards off Glimpse. Deluge is good. Twist. Stifle Swan Song. Rav Trap. That's okay. It. Yeah. This, this deck right seems reasonable. Yeah. There's a lot of cards in here. Mind Funeral. That's the one I was talking Mind about. Mind Funeral's good. Yeah. That's the one until you hit four lands. Breaking. Brain Freeze could be really good. Breaking's obviously very good. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's something like this. This is what I think about. I, I think it seems reasonable. I don't know if it's great, but, I mean, with the right control cards, the right removal, um, you can, you know, it doesn't take much to... It was 2-5. Okay. Yeah, that, that that's not as much as I'd hope. Right. And Hyphen, of course, is very aware of this, winning <laughs> out in this, in this format. Uh, so, yeah, PDX1 did went very well for Hyphen. Right. Um, but, yeah, I think... Uh, into it, like just based on just thinking about it, I think this deck seems great. I think that you probably don't need to take glimpse round seven, right, 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 right. or round eight. You just kind of do the do the thing that um, who what was his name um, in in the second draft that we did. Uh, oh, the the uh, the infect deck. The one Dan right. did, yeah, where you just like take all of the blue cards and then eventually round twenty five you grab it and it right. seems fine. Um, yeah. Oh great! Hyphen, send me that. Send me the full list of those uh, win records if you don't mind, and I'll add them to the sheet here. That'd be really helpful. Um, yeah, so uh, there's just a lot of decks I think would be really fun to do, mm-hmm. um, and I want to I want to figure out like what it works out with. Although now looking at all these new cards like Narset, Ashiok, lots of the other cards kind of shut down a lot of these combo decks, and I feel like the trend right now is going to be to forcing this format to mid-range. Right. Because a lot of the combo decks just get shut down by so many different pieces. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I was just on Twitter this weekend. There's been a whole lot of like LSV and others talking about how much Narset is just murdering Vintage and yeah. making it ridiculously unfun. 
and you know how Dexter happened to move back to even have a shot have to move back to uh, Red Elemental Blast or some, one of the blasts in, in the main deck. In the main deck. Yeah. Because it's just ridiculously unfun. That seems in fair. In format, you know. And I, I don't know. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not Witches of the Coast. I don't get to decide these things. Right. But that's that seems unhealthy right. for the format. So. And you know, and it's people that are not nor- the normally kind of you know complainers. Complainers, right? Yeah. I mean, these were. You know, high-end vintage players and LSV and folks, they were just like, this is just making vintage miserable. To be clear, LSV is a high-end vintage player. Right, right. But yes, right. your point stands. Um, okay, fair. Uh, anything else that you thought was weird or noteworthy about this the, this particular draft? Um, No, I mean, I thought, uh, you know, I mean, I, I think New Blood always brings in interesting new things, um, cards that pop up that are interesting. Um, you know, Cards I expect to stay around, like Chainer, I expect to stay in the reanimator strategy if you're in the red black reanimator. He, he never cast it before turn three, which I mean, right. I know that Chainer is good. Let's pull up Chainer a minute, because that card, that card we knew was going to see play, um, but I was not super impressed with it, honestly. Mm-hmm. Like, it it costs four mana. Right. It's a discard outlet, sure. I think it sees play not in a reanimator deck, but in something like a recurring nightmare deck or something where you have a lot of smaller reanimation he, targets. Did he take a uh, nightmare later? No, I don't okay. think so. And he didn't, and I, the reason why is he didn't have the smaller targets, right? Oh, no, he, he did take it, he didn't 44. play it, right. because he didn't have enough creatures to sack to make it, Yes. to keep it going, right? Like, that's a slightly different deck. That's I a more value. I can see Chainer in a Jund deck or like, something. Like, you move out some of my junk, move Nightmare into this, yes. and put it some more high end, that's where, that's where, you know, that Nick Fitz style, which I think is a legit thing right they, they I agree. um prowling seropod was amazing for me i actually that misplayed was... against you with it several times yes. i got too scared of some of the things you were doing and sacked it for a bitter ordeal when i should have just left it on the table yep um yeah, but i think yeah i think cards like that so if these walkers keep pushing kind of combo decks down a little bit like complex combo decks drawing lots of cards etc right then mid rangey becomes a thing, and cards like Prowling Serapod and... Serpo-powered? Serpo-powered. <laughs> um, and what's the other one that I almost took? Gaia's... The other one that's like the two mana, can't be countered, it's an older one. Um, Is this Sky Thrasher? No, it's just a, it's a, it's just like Serapod. Other creatures you control can't be countered. It's a, it's a Gaia something, I can't remember. Yeah, there's way too many R's in that word. I, yeah, it's really just an uncomfortable one. What's that green... There's a green card. Well, there's a green creature, Skylasher. Skylasher. But it's just a dude. Like, this this is another one that says your your creature spells can't be countered. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, I can definitely see that, right? right? Turning off the counter spells, because at the point where the big blue decks have to play a lot more counter spells so that they can answer uh, these these answers like Narset, right? They basically have big blue fighting big blue. You have a lot of these mid-rangey decks that have to just slide through. Um... Gaius Herald. Gaius Herald. Okay. Creature spells can't be countered That's for a two-drop one. one-one. Gaius Herald. When when is that one originally printed? Because uh, that card is tenth edition old. was the most recent printing. Yeah, yeah, but that's from that's from Plane Shift. Plane Shift. Yeah. I remember opening that in my first uh, yeah. my first. I almost drafted Herald as well. My first tournament pack of Magic. So. Herald. Yeah, that card's good. Um, sees play in my Feldegriff group hug deck. Ooh, there prominently. You go. Um, but okay, so so the deck that. I felt like I should have been able to beat and then just got stomped by was Joe's. Mm-hmm. And this happened on stream. Uh, I, I had a bribery Current. against him. I'm just like, okay, well, I can beat this. And then I briberied him. Neither Registor Alpha or Carnage Tyrant were there. I'm just They're like, well, shoot. Yeah, exactly. I just got wrecked. So I'm like, I guess I take a cost- Pester Mite or something. Right. <laughs> and just got stomped. Yeah. Um, Carnage Tyrant was good for him. That, yeah. was, that was me. He was picking 45th and he had, he had like... Um, the big uh, 12 12 one written down or whatever yeah. the guys were. Galta. Galta. And he was going to pick Galta. And I was just like, oh, I was like, dude, take Carnage Tyrant. He was like, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> so you literally lost me two <laughs> match games. I, w- I would have uh, I would have won that match there you handily. Because Register Alpha is a super easy card to answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually had a shack. Okay, that was the game. I had a shackles in play. Uh, and I could steal one half of the register to block the other one. Nice. Neither, with neither one of them could I get enough to be able to not die to Carnage Tyrant. Right. Because he had three dinosaurs on board against me. Um, but yeah, like, Carnage Tyrant just, it, in game one, it completely wrecked the game. It just shaped the entire game around it. And, like, I had a uh, Trina says out, and it couldn't race a Carnage Tyrant. Right. So. 
So the other deck that I think that should be looked at, and I think is quite interesting, um, and I'm seriously looking at, is uh, basically an a more vintagey version of the blue green flash deck from Standard. Okay. So yeah. just everything at instant speed. So you're taking counter spells to really prioritize, and then you're just flashy doing all the flash creatures, that, yeah. all the good flash creatures you can, and just end of their turn everything at instant speed. I mean, that is basically a fish deck, right? right like that is right. a classic. But basically, fish. 1999 fish deck. That new, fi- the new, the spectral pirate with flash that can draw your cards later. Yes. The, the, the flash wolf and uh. That one I feel like is, doesn't make the cut, but I mean, whatever. It's I mean, it's four mana, but if you I don't know if you played it against it in standard, but have, because yeah. like yeah, after that it just like every time you don't cast a spell on their turn or on your <laughs> turn, it just makes a wolf. Flash right? is also good though. Cutthroat. Cutthroat. Yeah. Which one? Yeah, the new cutthroat. That's definitely a part of it. Brian, Brian, right there. That oh, one. This one. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that card's great. Yeah. So um, I think like that deck with the with the counter spells, I think could be pretty pretty interesting. Legit. There's a lot of fairies, the flash, scrib ranger type. You know. Yeah. A uh, flash did flash. Oh, he he did. Uh, he took Hulk, but he didn't take Flash along with it. Interesting. Right. Uh, the card that was great that ever, that people uh, hated on was Phyrexian Furnace. Yeah, why? It's forty fourth pick. There ain't no reason to hate on a forty fourth pick, no matter what. Well, and and they were just like, oh, it's a bad version of Scrabbling Claws, and right. no, it's a much better version of Scrabbling Claws. Plus, it makes your opponents have to care about graveyard order, <laughs> which is a big benefit in pissing off your opponents. Right. Um. Because Scrabbling Claw says they get to choose which card they exile. This one just is always the bottom card. Right. So you can end up just wrecking reanimator decks where yeah. they cast Entomb and you tap and make them exile the card they just Entombed. So, actually, interesting. So look, let's look at the 45th this time. He played Nexus Main, yep. Glacial Gant Main, Fairy Main, Carnage Tyrant, I think was board only. But I don't know if it ended up being main or not. I don't know. Steel, uh, prob- I don't know, probably board. Tracker main, Villas he mained. Playcrafter I did not main, but I almost did. But this is, right, 45th pick is, is both a statement pick, right. but also a, oh crap, I'm running out of ideas, well, I need this card in my deck. Playcrafter was not, the idea was that I could answer, like, a quick Planeswalkers. Yeah. Because it makes sacks those as well, sure. right? So, and it also answered Blightsteel and things like that. Mm-hmm. So that was the idea there, um... For me, though, like, I mean, Curfew is also insane. Like, these kind What's of, curfew like, last... Do? Curfew no. is uh, both players bounce a creature. Oh, okay. Which is, I mean, yeah, it, yeah, against no. a, a bunch of Hexproof creatures, right. it's wonderful. Yeah, the um, this, this card sees play in Pauper and in Modern to answer the uh, the Boggles deck. Right. But, I mean, it was really good against Reanimator. Right. Uh, other than when they reanimate Iona and named your only color. That's pretty strong, too. Um, which happened to me. Right. But yeah, no, I think overall, like, this draft went really well. Uh, yeah. I think from a logistics point of view, I was really happy with it. Uh, from a playing point of view, I was really disappointed in it. Mm-hmm. But I can do better if I ever get drafted back. Right. Basically, the thing I learned from this is regardless of what the chances of me playing, I need to have a, a deck. plan. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, I because... mean, you are the ultimate last, you know, right. and that's <laughs> last replacement. So. Um, but yeah, it was overall a really fun time. Um, and... I really enjoyed Jeff losing the Gitaxian probe to me. I, I enjoyed stealing that from him. Uh, having Jeff in the room, I, I don't know if people enjoyed having the draft cam there. I felt like we need to reposition it, get it higher. I mean, you could only see. We had two people sitting at the extra table over there. Yeah. And you know, you could like I was over here in this corner, so you couldn't see me at all. So. Exactly. So we need to get the draft cam up right. high. So we, we need to get our regular camera it. up a little higher too to reduce glare. Um, True. Well, one, of, one of the playmats has a lot less space, had a lot less space than the other playmat yep. for visible space, and uh, the glare was also an issue. So. Yeah, glare's real. We also, we just need much better lighting for that. Yeah, like we absolutely. need actual lighting rigs set up if we want to make that better. Um, but yeah, I think overall, like it feels like it's in a pretty good spot right now. There's not massive glaring problems. Right, we've got the. Um feel out for or the schedule out to get players potential players schedules so we can get the next one yeah true set let, up. Me, let me live tell you how many people have responded to that i think we're at a pretty good response rate i think we have like 20 or so people that have responded but we can definitely uh we definitely need a couple more before we lock right. in the next date um as soon as the date does get locked in it'll be on twitter uh mm-hmm. and posted um yeah, double fried. I totally agree with your assessment. It was a, it was a cool idea. Uh, we need to get it at a spot where you can actually see more people. Um, and the the other thing is, I want to get draft. I want to get the chat 
onto the screen. And that's not so much for the actual live experience, but I think for a lot of people watching on YouTube, which I mean, it's probably more than half of our viewers, we want to make sure that those people uh, have an experience that mirrors the live view, right? Yeah. So obviously they can't talk, but when we're talking to chat a lot, it's really helpful for people to be able to see that. So I don't think for the draft itself, we're going to be able to do it just because there's so many words already on the screen. So many windows. And... Yeah, like there's a lot of stuff happening on the screen already. So like, unless it just goes in place of where we have the cards showing here. Right. There's just not much space for it, um, but what it does do is allows us to uh, allows us to have it during the actual play. We can fit it in there. See, we have 15 people that have responded right now. Okay. I think probably once we have 20 or so, then I'll actually lock in the date. Right. Um, but yeah, I think I think probably happening in November or December. Yeah. At a rough goal. So. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, it, uh, which deck do you think, in hindsight, right? Let's say pick four or five. Uh, we we both walked in with a strategy locked in that right. we're not going to change. Uh, I had a backup strategy. Oh, did you? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, in pick four or five, do you wish you had changed your backup strategy, or do you think that your base one was good enough? No, my backup strategy um, involved Elaine's deck, basically. Okay. Uh, yeah. And by four or five, I was out of it. So Got it. I, I could have done without Narset, but I think by four or five, it was I was out of it. Sure. So... Um, yeah, yeah, my backup strategy and was just the similar to the deck I did last time, except mm -hmm. for just going straight blue white and sure. but so a bunch of two card monies, but in straight blue white, um, with but adding some uh, shenanigans to go with Teferi to lock out like Teferi knowledge pool. Yes, and you know those things. So I obviously wish that around pick twenty or so I had branched into another color. You, I, you I, should have branched into red. Like I had fifteen picks that were just completely right. languished. White and, lightning bolt didn't go. You know, lightning bolt is only okay. I know, but, but if you branch into red, I mean, I think that... But, like, if I go into red, what do I do in red? Is it just a red-blue control deck? Yeah. But, like, what does red buy you? I, I don't know. I, I feel like red-black might have been better. Red buys you ability to deal with resolve permanents that you didn't necessarily have. True. Yeah, I'm not sold. I feel like green green or black are the two I, colors I would have gone into right. if I had to pick a second color. I mean, like, I agree know. red was massively underdrafted, right. but I don't think the answers red gives me are good enough to justify going into red once Splinter Twin's already taken. Um, if Splinter Twin's still on the table, then I think going right. into red is completely reasonable. Right. Fiery Confluence is, is a good card. Um, Fiery Confluence, is that the one that wheels? Let's yeah, it's this. got a baby wheel on it, I think. Yeah, or yeah, I guess not a wheel, a windfall, right. a personal windfall. I don't know what yeah, the name like for that, that is. Uh, but yeah, Car Fire Confluence is great. Oh no, this no. isn't the one. Which one? Are oh, we're thinking of the... We're uh, thinking of the Escalate one. It's the Mystic... So Confluences are the ones where you can pick any number of things. Right, we're thinking of the Escalate one. What are those called? Um, I don't remember. Oh no, it's Command. What, incendiary Command is the one I was thinking of. Oh no, yeah, Incendiary Command is 5 mana. That's okay. 6 mana. Uh, yeah, I was thinking of this one. Yeah. No, I was thinking of... Um, the collective. What is the the red collective? <laughs> oh, sure, sure, it's sure. It's got like a baby wheel on it. Yeah, okay, that card I was not thinking of at all. <laughs> I think that ninth seed is, has hit snark is really coming in strongly here. Double yeah. Fred agrees. Uh, but yeah, no, I I think Gush is insane, and I want to play a Gush deck no matter what yeah. if I play again. So I'm trying to remember. Did I ha I had the second pick right, and I picked eighth. Uh, you had. Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah so we don't have those up anymore. But yeah, you. You, Alec obviously got first pick. Right. You got second. second. Elaine got third pick. I, in hindsight, I got fourth. I would have taken second pick. Really? Okay. That's what I think you think Ancestral is better than the wheel? If I would... Um, not necessarily, but I think like my other deck was more powerful. And I wanted the wheel for this deck. Yes. But I think okay. the other Fair deck enough. was... I think second... Second's really close, right? I mean, it's close to a wheel. Yeah. It, it's not a guaranteed wheel, but it's pretty close. You True. Know? Um, I mean, maybe, maybe in my seat... Um, I took third. Maybe I should have actually taken seventh there. Right. Because, like, if I don't know what I'm drafting and I'm tired and I can't do the time vault deck, mm -hmm. maybe I don't care about Sapphire as much. Right. And if I don't have Sapphire, then I can just be like, uh, realistically, if you're in seventh seat, you can almost always pick up double mox. Right. Um, like, not guaranteed, but usually you can look at double Or not mox, mox something. I mean, you, you can get... Yeah, well, and, and mox soul ring or mox mana crypt or just right. mox something that's very powerful. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't know what the wheel buys you off Collective Defiance, but I think if you're in a red blue deck, uh, having a wheel is useful. Like just having that option is nice. Uh, but I agree, it's not a reason to break into it by any means. Um, so 
I'm going to bring up something that Elaine and I were texting about, and I'm just going to spoil some tech for her, for anybody that happens to be watching this. Uh, the card, the cards that she was like, we forgot to ban a bunch of cards, and these cards need to be off the format entirely, mm-hmm. uh, because all of the draft works cards exist. So cards like uh, from Conspiracy. Yeah, right? but, uh, but aren't those banned because they're banned in Vintage? They're not banned in Vintage. Really? Okay, pull one up. Let me see. So... Uh, Man, I really need to... I wish I had these up right now. Um, so, the cards that are like, you can draft the rest of a pack. Oh, instance. okay. Uh, Arcane Savant, there you go. Arcane, okay, so Arcane Savant is a good one. That's the one that... Right, uh, that's the rare one. That's the one that I was going to end on, where uh, it allows you to play it, go find an instant or sorcery that you drafted but didn't have in your deck, and play it. Okay. Right, so... The strategy that we both decided is really insane that I'm going to scoop her right now on is Arcane Savant Biorhythm. <laughs> right? So you just cast a 5-drop and you win the game if they don't have a creature. Um, which is obviously very good. Yeah, uh, good. Yes, uh, so wow. this card and uh, the other one is Regicide is the other card that I think is insane. Which is, you draft it, you get to pick a color of the player to your left picks a color, the player to your right picks a color, and it can kill any creature of that color. Yeah, these need banned. <laughs> no, I don't think it does, though. Okay, okay. I, I, I don't think this card... I mean, they're legal and vintage, then they're legal, man. Well, they are legal and vintage, but in vintage, you don't have a draft. Right, So right. this card does literally nothing in vintage. Right. So I could see one of these cards getting to the point where it needed to be banned, but I don't think the cards are actually powerful enough uh, to, to justify it. The other one is Palandio something, City of the something... Uh, which is basically a city of brass. Okay. There's a city of brass that taps for three colors, where you pick one, left picks one, right picks one. Uh, what is the name of this card? All right, it's Palano, Paliano, Paliano the High City. Okay. Um, this card is is pretty strong. It just lets you basically it, tap for one of three colors. Pretty strong, yeah. But you don't get control of two of the colors. Right. Still good. Yeah. Um. But th- these are all cards that we were talking about, and we're like, yeah, these cards are very <laughs> strong, and they deserve to be played. Right. Uh, so Volatile Chimera is another one that is brought up. This is a card that says uh, you pay three mana for a 3-2. Uh, you reveal a card, and you could exile three creature cards, and it turns into one of those cards. All right, before you shuffle your deck to start the game, you may reveal this card from your deck and exile three or more creature cards you drafted that aren't in your deck. Right, so you pay five mana and it becomes a it becomes any creature. <laughs> oh, that so card's sick. It's a five mana Emrakul. Right, right, right. Like, but none of these things are inherently broken in my right, mind. Right, right. Like they're good. They're very good. They yeah. can build decks around these cards. But That's a lot funny. of the ones that a yeah. lot of the ones that you would that you care about are ones that like, okay, you get to take every card that the last card of every pack that the player takes. And my ruling on this is there are no there are no packs. Right. Right. So as long as you remove the packs restriction on the stuff, right, nothing's broken. There's another card that is has power and toughness equal to the number the pick it was taken. So it's basically a five right, mana right, forty five forty five, which that is a good card, but I don't think it's broken. Um, uh, this is not a conspiracy draft, but the draft cards don't actually say conspiracy draft anywhere on them. They just say draft uh, hyphen, just for based on what it says right there at least. Um, and sure, this can be a conspiracy draft if that actually is literally in the in the rules. But I don't think any of these cards are broken. If they are, we'll reevaluate. But I have not seen anything that actually breaks wide open for me. Uh, the other one that popped out at me is like, oh, this card's pretty good. Is garbage fire, which is just a three mana kill anything essentially because right. it deals forty five damage. Um, but like these cards are all decently fair, right? Three mana. I guess if you have a Boros Reckoner, it's just three mana kill somebody. Uh, which seems pretty strong. Um, but yeah, <laughs> you can see the wheels spinning in Hagen's head right now. No, I'm actually, there's a card I wanted to discuss about, is it is it good, playable? Uh, okay. So we've got, we've got some spoilers for the new stuff, right? Okay. And, uh, what is her name? The new fairy. The new fairy. The fairy brawl commander. Oh, um, I do not know. It's... A L E, I think it's Aleta. A L T. I'm pretty sure they're up to Scribe already. T A. Sure. Try T A. See if that just pops up. Alita. Yeah. Uh, no. That's we're finding a bunch of foreign it. cards, I think. Um. And uh, I'll try actually to see if I can find it here. Right. It's uh, I'm just. Well. Oh, 
A L E L A, Alila. Alila. Uh, yeah. All right. So this card, I don't know if it is or not. It's it's pretty interestingly powerful. It is five mana, so that probably means probably not. But okay. um, I think it's got some conspiracies only work in conspiracy draft as per CR. Yeah. yeah okay. This will be a conspiracy draft. Then that's fine. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't think. If it ends up being broken, then we can deal with it. But the draft matters cards aren't included in that. There you go. So okay, yeah. Oh yeah, conspiracies are banned. So right. conspiracies themselves are banned in vintage, so they're not playable here. The draft matters cards though do matter, and I, th- I, th- I don't think there's any of them that are broken. But we'll find out. The one that jumps out immediately though is uh, Arcane Savant. That one I could easily see being broken wide open that we need to deal with. But we'll see. I mean, five mana, mm-hmm. you win the game. Probably isn't a broken card. We'll see. So this card is kind of interesting, right? It's uh, four mana, so that, that may, may make it closer, right? She's so she's basically uh, Esper, so but one a one mana more vampire nighthawk, right? Flying death touch lifelink. Yep. Two three. Other f- creatures with flying get plus one zero. Oh. But the interesting part is whenever you cast an artifact or enchantment, you get a one one fairy, which is basically a two one fairy. Um. So four mana for I mean like. In a format where Monastery Mentor is legal, I right. don't see how this card can really blow things up. Like, maybe if you go Bitter Blossom into this, right. it's fine. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's just one of those that, you know, the, the little things that, you know, s- that seems powerful. It up, that, yeah. You know, you, like uh, with Mystic Forge, <laughs> you know, sure. like when you're casting and there's artifacts off the top of your deck and, you know, a format that likes a lot of artifacts or enchantments anyway. Yep. I don't know. It was one of those that just I always look at the new stuff and going, ah, is this one you know somewhere playable? And this one is the. I could see this card. It wouldn't surprise me if this card saw play in a deck. It would surprise me if this became a like oh, yeah. pick ten kind there of card. There you go. Absolutely, I agree yeah. with that. The other one, if the it hasn't been official split, but if the so we're not going to talk about depth, but I will say if the Rowan and Will yeah card is real, then on the same card. Yep. Then that could be in a deck. I agree. Right? Yeah. Okay. Well. Everybody, I hope we got your head spinning about some new ideas, uh, some of the Arcane Savant, for instance, and uh, Regicide. I really hope Regicide and City of Polenio see play, because both of those are very good cards, and it would be cool to kind of figure out how we represent that on the spreadsheet, right? Right. Of uh, Regicide Blue, and then the other players have to insert their modifications right. to add it. Like, that would be kind of fun. Um, so I think there's a lot of potential there. But um, thanks all for tuning in. Uh, and we'll post on Twitter, and uh, we might do another one of these um, to figure out how to build Doomsday. We'll see. Yeah, we'll do maybe okay. do Doomsday in October. That'd be fun. All right, All right. see you all. See you all. Thanks.